Hello, uh, my name is Gabriel Saldana. Uh, I am a uh, patient navigator here at the Cancer Research Center of the Desert here in Imperial County. Um, I am a, uh, a master's in social work student at uh, Arizona State University. I'll be completing my master's in May. Uh, so thank you for, for having me here. Going through some uh, personal health challenges as well kind of inspired me to advocate and help others. I was going through some challenges as well where I felt a point in my life where I was lost. And having that support, having that guidance, having that hope um, encouraged me to say, you know what, it's not as bad as it seems. And I do have the skills if I dedicate myself uh, time and effort to learn those skills and overcome any challenge. So I've always uh, find it in myself to help others. Uh, my family is very supportive. We help those who are in need. So it's always been on, on me to help those who are vulnerable, to help those who need that extra push. So working with a behavioral health and help, helping those patients, um, you know, face the stigma of a mental health uh, challenge also made me realize that going into the profession of social work was going to help me uh, focus on uh, helping them, teaching them skills to overcome those challenges, to self-advocate and to most importantly, um, you know, teach them the resources that our community has that a lot of people do not know that we have. And that's my push into going into the social work field. So I completed my bachelor's of social work at Northern Arizona University. And then a year later, here we are at um, ASU completing my master's. Here at the CRCD, what we do as patient navigators is uh, when a patient comes, we do an assessment uh, just to see where our patients, uh, our patients stand. So we take information such as demographics, um, diagnoses, other health concerns, the support system, which is very important for our patients. We try to get as much information such as uh, medical insurance, any health history, to look and explore additional resources that the patient may have to apply and uh, to link him or her to um, these resources that are available to him or her. We try to mitigate and eliminate any potential barrier that our patients may have. So for example, if a patient comes with an insurance uh, that is not being accepted at a medical facility for him or her to receive his, cancer, his or her cancer treatment, we try to explore financially what that patient has and we try to mitigate and eliminate potential barriers that will impede for that person to receive the treatment. If a person is in need for in-home supported services such as home health, we try to explore those resources financially to see if that person may qualify or what that person needs in order to be qualified for that particular service. Even when we receive phone calls and they ask us, hey, so what services are you offering? Is it free? What insurance do you accept? We always try to start with our services are completely free, especially when dealing with a very uh, big diagnosis such as cancer. A lot of families are afraid to do the big step because treatment is expensive, traveling is expensive, medical equipment is expensive. So we try to compensate all that. We try to um, stabilize our patient to um, make them understand that uh, there's help there and those resources here are completely free. Was one of our patients who uh, was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Have you, this, this, this gentleman, he's a 47 year old male and um, he, was the, he was a provider. You know, he was working long hours in the field, uh, always provided for his family, very respectful, very, uh, uh, very nice gentleman. All of a sudden he got diagnosed with multiple myeloma. So everything changed in the family dynamic, you know? Um, he has a wife uh, and uh, three kids. So everything changed in that, in that family dynamic. So he had to stop working and that affected everyone, not just him, but everyone financially. The nucleus of that family was affected. So this patient uh, needed to uh, have a uh, cell transplant uh, in around December. So uh, after that, post the transplant, he needed to stay close to the uh, UCSD facility, the, the hospital, for observation. It's a very great place. It's just the fact that he had to pay out of pocket $1,700 was just a burden for him. So we tried to, uh, you know, sit down and explore the possible resources, just just uh, such as um, applying to different financial grants cancer care, uh, the Lymphoma Leukemia Society. And a lot of the times it could be scary for patients because they don't have the financial uh, stability to 
accommodate themselves and that's something that they need he needed to be close to the hospital so what we did was we uh throughout these months when he came around august we had four months of planning and we tried to apply for every cancer grant that there was and uh we were able to actually apply for uh the american cancer society which offered a big portion as well of um a lodging assistance so um, by now, um, our, my patient was able to stay. He was able to get, get the full scope of the money that he needed. And he was able to stay at least a month in there for follow-ups. And now he's at home recovering. So these, these uh, donations that we receive is uh, directly tailored to our patient services. Uh, we do purchase um, like gas cards or gift cards with that, with that money to help alleviate some of the financial stress that the patient may have. Uh, gas card for traveling to their medical facility, a nutrition card, uh, which is to a gift card to buy the, their essential needs. So we do thank the community for um, spreading awareness and you know donating because all these services uh, are for patients that really do need it.